This podcast represents my opinion and the opinion of my guests. This is not medical advice, and I am not establishing a patient-physician relationship with any listener. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for informational purposes only. And because each patient is so unique, please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions you may have. Producer Seth here again on the Not Your Doc podcast with my good friend, Dr. Charles Tadros. Hey. How are you doing today, Doc? Hey, fine, Seth. Nice to see you. Wait, wait, ha- hang what, on a second. What, wait, what, wait, what ha- what's could happening? What's could, happening could here? It be? Is it me? Are we, <laughs> are we fired? <laughs> what have you been doing all these weeks, Seth? I've got, I've really got to take you to task about this, okay? Uh, I'm sure we've got plenty of emails. <laughs> yes. Plenty. The text inbox is not happy about your performance. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> totally just kidding. It's so good to be back, guys. Vanessa, welcome back. How's it been going? Pretty well. Uh, bumpy, but pretty well. It's been a, a few months without you. How's, yeah. the, how's the new baby? He is awesome. Fantastic. He is awesome. And it's only been two months. Yeah. Just got to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's I, not I been... don't know where you got bumped from. I thought we'd been doing great. You're good. <laughs> you guys have been doing great. I've been listening to what you've been putting out, and it's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I've certainly missed you guys, but um, motherhood is amazing. It is exhausting and challenging and all of those things, but it's so rewarding and special and super grateful for the time that I've been able to spend with him. Yes. Um, his name is John Arthur. He was uh, born on April 21st, seven pounds, 20 inches. Um, mm-hmm. He's Hands- doing awesome. Handsome boy. Yeah, he's handsome. He is. He looks like his dad when he's smiling and playing and happy, and he looks like me when he's angry <laughs> and hungry and tired, and, which is awesome. <laughs> and, he'll, and he'll continue to change. He'll have certain features. He'll have certain features that will keep, and lots of stuff will change. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool, honestly. Um, when, he, when he was first born, I took a look at him, and I was like, Oh my gosh! I created a clone of my little brother. Yeah. Like when, He's... so I I was five when my brother was born. So I remember mm-hmm. him as a baby. But mm-hmm. I mean, you know, seriously, just looking at him, I was like, oh my god, this is. Well, what... Jack is a handsome, talented guy. Yes, he else... is. What, what... And John Arthur is named after him anyway. So yeah. Jack, my brother is John Christopher. So John is beautiful. Um, that's his namesake. So, but you know, all all of this, um, you know, having a baby and and seeing what characteristics he has from Mm -hmm. um, both my side of the family and my husband's side of the family has gotten me thinking a lot about um, genetics and how we get the characteristics that um, we, you know, carry throughout our lives, the things that we do get from our parents, the things that Mm -hmm. we develop ourselves. Um, And then also the influence of, you know, generations before me, the things and decisions that they made, how that has an influence on Mm -hmm my son and what he looks like and how he's going to develop. So Mm -hmm. um, today we're going to talk about why your family history matters to your health. Um, And we're going to hit some topics about genetics and epigenetics today. Big words. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent lead. And thank you for having a baby. So we have something to talk about. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I've got uh, lots and lots of stuff in the can that, um, you know, just from being in the hospital and going through birth and having a baby and dealing with new doctors mm-hmm. and stuff that's going to produce a lot of content, I think. Well, fantastic. And in this case, a can means like like audio can or video oh, yeah. can, <laughs> not the, the can like the toilet, like the military can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. But yes. So <laughs> lots, of, lots of ideas. This is fantastic. Well, thank you. Well, how, how would you like to start? Well, I think a, a big question that a lot of people have is... Why doctors care about our, our family history mm-hmm. in general? I mean, you with every patient that you sit down with at the Catamine Clinic, you mm-hmm. have a consultation with them. And a big part of that consultation is you asking about their family history. And yes. you're not just asking about their family history of mental health, right. but their medical history, um, their living situation, you know, when, when they were born, when they passed, how mm-hmm. they passed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, a big question is what, what's the purpose of that? What does that inform you? Um, sure. you know, what do you learn about people when you ask those questions? Yeah. Well, for, just for, uh, just a, in context. So whenever I sit down with a patient as an internist, whenever I was a primary care doctor, um, the typical 
uh, list of things in roughly the, this order was uh, is the is the chief complaint. And the word in medicine, complaint, does not mean uh, belly aching. Yeah. It just means the chief concern, as stated by the patient. Um, uh, that's the first thing. Um, and then uh, the history of present illness, uh, what, what, how the patient got to this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are symptoms and signs. Symptoms are uh, uh, things that you can't see, and signs are things you can see. A sign is a rash. A symptom is heartburn. Mm-hmm. Uh, so signs and symptoms. Um, and what, where, when, why, how, how much, what makes it better, what makes it worse for every condition, whatever the concerns are for every, every, every one of them. They come in with three concerns. We have to go through all these for each one of these concerns. Yeah. Um, and then uh, oftentimes there's past medical history, and that's what we're talking about here. Past medical history for the patient, uh, that's the first thing, uh, which includes prior surgeries um, and, and, and uh, et cetera. Um, other medications, other physicians, other testing, and then also family history, and that's what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll come back to that. We talk about also medications and allergies. We talk about a review of systems, which is just a, a list of general questions about all, all, all sorts of other things from head to toe that the patient may, may have forgotten about or may not under, realize is important for me to know. So we kind of trigger them by asking a list of different questions or have them circle a bunch of different questions from head to toe about yeah. different things. And then a physical exam, which should includes vital signs, et cetera, and then an assessment and plan, kind of putting it together uh, what we would believe the, the concerns are, the patient came in with, old concerns, new concerns, anything else, anything else that the physician picked up, and a plan about each one of these things, what to do about them or just to watch them and or send them to special to specialists or testing. So but it's the, kind of the structure that's overall a big structure of, of a consultation a, or a new an patient typically, a new or patient. that's right, okay, new patient gotcha. or, vis- or annual visit. So that one piece of it you were interested in is that family history piece, yeah. and we're interested you Usually, and, and actually, as I've grown older, I'm interested in non-genetically related people, but people you live with. Yeah. Uh, and I'll come back to that. But but we're interested in biological uh, uh, relatives. So uh, biological mother, biological father, whether they're married or not, um, uh, 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 the uh, s- siblings. So these are all considered first-degree relatives. Mm-hmm. Your mother, father, uh, mother, father, brother, sister is first-degree relatives. Then outside of that, and your own children too, if you have kids of your own, so all for first-degree relatives. Then outside of that, we get in second and third degree relatives and aunts and uncles and grandparents, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, the further away, typically in general medicine, the further away that you go from first and second degree relatives, the less uh, important um, uh, both physical and mental health issues are. Not totally, and we, we're going to come back to talk about that. But I'm interested in uh, inherited uh, things. So if, if if your mother had breast cancer, uh, if your biological mother had breast cancer uh, before uh, in, in, before menopause, premenopausal, before age 50, in a lot of women is premenopausal, then it increases. That's that's an early, uh, and oftentimes they're aggressive, and that may increase your risk for breast cancer, whether you're male or female. And mm-hmm. that's important to differentiate. There's a small number of males that do get breast cancer. The risk factors, uh, as I had mentioned before, we we, we got on the on the microphone. There's inherited issues. This is genetics. This is the DNA, uh, the X, X and Y chromosomes that come uh, one from your mom and one from your dad, depending on your if you're male or female. Uh, the X uh, two X's in your in your um, um, in your, from the ova uh, from the ovum or the ova and the sperm. If an X and X come together, they make a, uh, a genetic uh, female, and an X and a Y make a genetic male. Um, so, but but. It, some things are inherited uh, uh, through uh, through the X and Y chromosomes, um, and by the way, these X and Y chromosomes uh, are only <clears throat> are actually in all your cells, uh, but uh, but. Uh, uh, but you, we have two types of cells, those uh, germ, uh, germ cells, the germ, not germ like a bacteria, but germ cells are these X and Y uh, uh, cells that have um, these gen- gen- all the genetic material that's going to make the whole body. And then there's somatic cells. That's the rest of your body, your heart, your kidney, and your liver all have mm-hmm. different types of cells in each one of those, not just one type of cell in each organ, but multiple different types for the blood vessels and, each, and, and uh, et cetera. Uh, and uh, so this, we traditionally think that the somatic cells and the genes in those are not transmitted to the next generation, whereas the X and Y chromosomes that make uh, those are transmitted from generation to generation. The features of mm-hmm. that, with the brown eye color, etc. Yeah. So, and the, so the germ cells carry the genetic material right. in them, and that's what in, into the next generation. Into the next generation, right. and it, it tells your body 
how to perform all the functions that mm -hmm. it performs and how the different characteristics will get expressed, correct? Well, they, they come together. The egg and the sperm come together, and uh, they implant in, 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 in the uterus, hopefully, and it grows. And as it grows, it starts making the, orga uh, the organs, mm -hmm. and so that's so that actually that generates the rest of your body from, sure. those, two, from those two cells, a single sperm cell and a single o ova or ovum. Of course, there are yep. cases where uh, we get twins and triplets, et cetera, then we won't get into that. But that's correct. Uh, that, that's correct. So we, and then our body, once we start developing from the uh, from an uh, from an ova and a sperm, an ovum, uh, it was a singular, it was an ovum and a sperm. Uh, then the rest of your body have, develops the somatic cells, the soma, yeah. uh, for that makes up all our skin and our organs, etc. Gotcha. And traditionally, uh, we th we we don't think that the, the 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 cells of the rest of your body transmit anything to the next generation. Whereas whenever the baby eventually uh, develops into puberty and has uh, a genitalia that and becomes fertile, uh, then the sperm and eggs uh, are developed, whichever sex, sure. the sperm and eggs uh, develop, and then this, the next round is ready uh, for, for if they're going to have children down the line. You keep saying traditionally we mm -hmm. think that the somatic cells mm -hmm. don't get passed down. Is that mm -hmm. is that the current thought still, or... Yeah. Or is there is that called into question somewhat? Yeah. Or? So okay. some some things that we'll talk about that. That's part of why we we're talking today. Is not just the gene, the genome, or the genes, but if they're turned on and off and how they're modified, they're called the epigenetics. Yeah. And that happens, we believe, uh, in in uh, multiple uh, cells in our body. Sure. Um, we can come back to that. Yeah. But the traditional way of how we learned in biology over many decades is uh, is that that you don't there that you get your parents genes for through the X chromosome or Y chromosome, uh -huh. whichever one, and that's all you get. Got it. But we now know that there's modifications that we can we note that are important to those uh, genes uh, that uh, can start pre pre uh, pre implantation sure. uh, before uh, impregna uh, being impregnated. Yeah, okay, so, so we have you you were talking about in, there are inherited mm -hmm. diseases. Mm -hmm. And then there's also ge a genetic predisposition. Is that correct? Right. Are those the two separate categories so, here? Yeah. So, so for instance, when I typically talk to patients about their mother, father, let's pretend, uh, their biological mother, biological father, I'll ask about uh, do they have any uh, problems with depression, bipolar disease, schizophrenia, alcohol, or other substance use or abuse, uh, heart disease, hypertension, stroke, cancer, diabetes, kidney or liver problems. All these t things typically are uh, potential. Inc if they're positive, uh, they're 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 sh they've been shown in your mom or dad. They develop them uh, somewhere in their life. It increases the risk of the of my patient uh, mm -hmm. having uh, increased risk, not automatic. Right. Increased risk of uh, my patient having uh, that the, the the tendency to get depression, bipolar, alcohol, substance abuse, hypertension, diabetes, kidney or liver stuff. Yeah. So that's kind of gives me a hint, uh, and especially if it may be coming sooner than later. Sure. Uh, so Okay, uh, so you can have a genetic predisposition mm -hmm. to acquiring these de diseases if they're in your family history. That's right, first, second, and, first, second degree relatives, to sometimes even third degree relatives, but that's and correct. And then there are diseases that are directly inherited through genes from the parent to child, right? Right, right. so yes, so, so the, these would be the ones that are inherited directly. So okay. this is this is the genes that, that for the list of stuff that I just talked about. Uh, that's That would be kind of inherited directly. Oh, okay, uh, so that's, gotcha. that's, that's the okay. stuff. It, also, with the positive stuff, like hair color, yeah. Uh, eye color, uh, skin t uh, skin tone, how much um, uh, melanocytes, how many melanocytes this is the pigmentation yeah. that you have. That's all. All these are inherited uh, uh, features that you get from your parents. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. So, um, okay, cool. So then, what do um, so once you have that you know full picture of like what the what the family history mm -hmm. is like and what different kinds of um, you know conditions might come into play. Uh, what, like, what does that help you to determine about the patient mm -hmm. that's sitting in front of you? Mm -hmm. yeah. And what other questions might you ask based on that information? Sure. Uh, so, um, uh, number one, I, I'm looking at my patient. I've talked to them about their symptoms or signs. Eventually, during that visit, I will have done the blood pressure and physical exam. I'll eventually do blood work. They'll come back later. So, all these things I piece with the patient who's sitting in front of me, expressing some of the inherited stuff uh, from the parents, mm -hmm. inherited features. Um, and then I'm also looking for risks. So, I'm a kind of a, a risk manager. Mm. Um, so, if somebody comes in with a sore throat, I'm assessing is it going to be cancer? Is it going to be a strep? Is it going to be post? Drip? Is it because? 
cause they have reflux. So I'm assessing these types of risks. And some risks are much higher for bad outcomes, uh, morbidity or mortality, illness and death. So I'm always assessing these things in light of what the patient presents as, what they complain about, whether I have physical exam and my blood work and imaging, et cetera. And sometimes I have to send a specialist. And I also position it in, in, in with, a, with one eye towards their family history. Mm-hmm. So if their family history, they tended to have a uh, 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 Melan- different types of cancers, melanomas, uh, uh, sarcomas, etc., then we may have an inherited uh, 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 neoplasm, malignant neoplasm uh, uh, gene, a set of gene or gene mutations um, that leave for meany, for instance, is one of them, um, uh, BRCA, the BRCA uh, gene mutations. So I, I'm always looking for if, if what I've heard from the family history, and I look at the patient in front of me, if we need to uh, be more aggressive in terms of searching sure. or, uh, for, 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 uh, for whether diseases or sending them for a patient for more testing, such as genetic yeah. testing, et cetera. So in your risk assessment, mm-hmm. if, a, if something is present in their family history that might overlap mm-hmm. with a possible cause of whatever signs or symptoms mm-hmm. the patient is presenting with, that influences what you're going to search for yeah, and, and your, your risk assessment. In that's general. right. Okay, yeah. That, that, that yeah. could be a higher risk that's of right. it being one of these things if there's a familial history. That's right. So it's if, if, if my patient is sitting in front of me is obese and both their parents develop type 2 diabetes, uh, then my patient who already has a high risk because of his family history mm-hmm. of diabetes increases his risk further by being obese uh, himself or herself. So it's even more impetus for me to say, hey, it's not just it's not already written that you're going to get diabetes because both your parents have it. You ha- we can modify some stuff in you, some right. of your lifestyle and eating and exercise that can decrease your risk of having getting diabetes uh, at all or possibly as early as your parents did. Yeah, um, a lot of stuff we can't prevent totally, but we can push it to late in life. Or heart disease, all of us as we grow older will eventually, almost all of us will eventually develop some hard, hardening of the artery that starts off as soft plaques with cholesterol inside of our artery walls. Uh, but we'd like to push it off instead of 30 or 40 having a heart attack, we'd like to push it off until you're 90 or 100 uh, where it becomes significant um, uh, life, life, life-threatening life uh, yeah. issue. So Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so that sort of brings us to this like newer emerging field of genetics called epigenetics. That's right. Um, so what we know about, you know, g- genetics, genes in general, you can't change your genes. That's you right. have the genes that you have. They're, you're, you're born with them. You've inherited them. The from DNA. Long, the DNA is from right. long line of people that have created down to you. That's right. Correct. Um, but epigenetics is the study of how genes are turned on and off mm-hmm. and how those changes can be influenced by the environment. Yes. So that kind of goes into what you were talking about with mm-hmm. why these lifestyle factors have an important influence, not just on the out the disease outcome, but maybe even your um, propensity to develop it in the first place, correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I mean, epigenetics are, and uh, uh, we've studied them extensively in animals, animal models, uh, flatworms, uh, planaria, roundworms, uh, and and other animals. But we're now in the last ha- handful of years, uh, 10 years plus, uh, that we are starting to understand epigenetic modifications. This is turning on and off. This is methylation and acetylation and other uh, factors that turn on and off your g- genes. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, what it, ha- Help me understand mm-hmm. what, what does that mean? If a gene is turned on, it means mm-hmm. it's its information is going to be expressed. Is that correct? That's correct. So uh, not every gene is, is a good gene. Okay. Uh, uh, so that's, it's not always that something's like, oh, turn them all on, like turn on all the yeah, lights right. in the house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so it's, that's correct. Uh, so there are there are genes, for instance, that protect us against cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you have them turned on, that uh, they, these genes, um, which sit inside the nucleus, the brain of your each cell in your body, these genes are expressed uh, through RNA into a protein. Um, so the 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 the, 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 the your chromosome unwinds and unzips. Uh, these are all different terms on wines uh, mm-hmm. from a big coil. And then uh, the, the two, it's like two uh, legs of a ladder. Yeah. You, it unzips like the, the, the steps of the ladder kind of break off in mm-hmm. the middle. And so you have different, two different pieces. RNA comes in and copies it. And then RNA goes out into the rest of the cell outside the nucleus of the cell uh, into, into the cytosol of the cell uh, and actually it produces the protein. And this protein can be, in this case, it could be protective against, mm-hmm. uh, against cancers. So, 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 
uh, that's cancer prevention. So if you have the gene turned on and off, and some people think extra decreased stress helps improve uh, the the, the risk, decreasing risk of cancer, uh, avoiding alcohol, avoiding obesity, avoiding smoking, mm-hmm. all these things uh, um, inc- increase your risk of uh, being resistant to cancers or de- decreases risk of having a cancer. So uh, I just want to make sure mm-hmm. I'm I'm tracking. So the you know there are there are genes that are protective against cancers that mm-hmm. produce these protective proteins that mm-hmm. can then be copied into the rest of the cells and produce more protection essentially, right? That's right. So our the the things that we currently do with our body can influence whether that is that gene is switched on or off. That's right. If it's switched off, you've got a real decline in the protective um, That's right. It's barriers more. against cancers mm-hmm. and all the different types of diseases. If it's turned on, mm-hmm. you've got more protection, right? That's correct. Yeah. So I think what's, uh, you know, part of this field of study would be developing treatments that target those specific protective That's right. genes. Is that Absolutely. correct? That's, okay. that's 100% correct. Cool. Okay. So um, if, uh, so I think then what I'm hearing is that there are there are negative epigenetic changes and mm-hmm. there are positive epigenetic That's changes. Right. So I guess a negative one would be this, you know, the DNA methylation that you're talking about where it, you know, switches off. Yeah, well, it could be off or on, but that's, yeah, so it's not always automatic that it's a, that's a negative to have a methylation. A methyl group is a very small okay. molecule that's attached on top of this, 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 the, your chromosomes or your gen, gen, genetics, mm-hmm. genetic material in the nucleus of your cell. Um, so uh, sometimes it's a positive and sometimes it's a negative thing to have that methyl group on there. Right. That's right. But silencing of good genes is bad, right? That's correct. And blocking the production, the production of pro, of protective proteins is bad that's right correct. so yes. we want to right. those would be can those would be negative epigenetic changes that's right and those can occur because of these environmental factors right that's right so what are the environment environmental factors that create those negative epigenetic changes so, that we think anyway that's fine so we're not talking about the inherited uh, uh, cancer risk from your right. parents we're just talking about within uh, just your cells your somatic cells so uh, so for instance exposure to too much ultraviolet light increases your risk for skin cancer uh, we like the tan a lot of us like a tan but too much of it and it's good for uh, ultraviolet Violet light is important to generate vitamin D in our skin, mm-hmm. but too much uh, sunshine. I just came back from Florida. Too much ultraviolet. Uh, spe- part this is a narrow part of the whole spectrum of light that comes through our atmosphere and hits our skin. Uh, it, it, so whenever you have too much ultraviolet light, it increases risk of multiple, almost all skin cancers, melanoma, basal cell, squamous cell, or almost all uh, uh, um, increased um, by uh, light exposure, ultraviolet light exposure. So that's one thing that that, that is a problem for environmental Oh, it turns out uh, it turns out um, uh, alcohol increases the risk of uh, everything and I, this is with our private previous right. podcast oral pharyngeal cancers esophageal cancers bladder cancers uh, breast cancers uh, multiple cancers are increased just from alcohol consumption not Can even I- not even just excess alcohol consumption just plain old regular what you know, a few drinks a week potentially can be enough to, to increase your risk for cancers and that's also an environmental risk factor for cancers for instance can I ask a clarifying sure. question real quick? So I think we've we've all heard about UV rays being being Ultra dangerous violet. and and increasing risk for for cancer. I think I've heard people say before that it damages your DNA. That's right. Very good. Is that is that another? Could we also another way of saying damages your DNA? Mm-hmm say that it creates negative epigenetic changes? Well, actually, it can do it a couple of different ways. But the, the main way that we were taught is that the energy of the ultraviolet light is high enough to actually break DNA, ah, uh, the okay. DNA uh, molecule. Yeah, so it breaks up part of your chromosomes. And you have a natural healing part. Uh, there's a whole mechanism for your chromosomes to heal again. Uh, to uh, Remember, there, there are multiple copies. Uh, so to heal again. Uh, but sometimes the healing process is incorrect and allows a, a, a cancer to grow. Okay. So that, so those are there mm-hmm. are two different things. Okay, that's I understand. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So that's that's the that's traditional way. Before yeah. we ever talked about epigenetics, we talked about direct DNA D- damage. Damage. Okay. Right. All right. So you were you said um, UV rays and alcohol. Are there other other yeah, tobacco, environmental nicotine? Things? Uh, yep, and actually probably not, probably tar and some other things too. And within mm-hmm. within a, within a cigarette or within uh, typically cigarettes uh, or is that hundreds of chemicals and 
multiple of them uh, are uh, tar is uh, 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 can be carcinogenic, uh, can produce cancers in uh, normal cells and stuff like that. So that's the other one. Uh, so obesity is another one that's understated. We talk about obesity for diabetes, obesity for your bad knees, for arthritis, obesity for heart disease, but we don't understand that obesity is a, its own independent risk factor for cancer, for increased mm. risk for cancers. No, I'm, I'm sure they have some understanding out there about why. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why, uh, right now. But that is another uh, another one of them. Uh, so those are a couple, a couple of the things. Um, and then for heart disease, et cetera, and there are other things that, that we can you know, that 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 increase the risk through epigenetics. We believe. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. So what about what about environmental like literally in the environment so pollution ozone all these things like that sure that's a good point um, ozone is a reactive oxygen species. This is just a fancy word to say. Very excited, uh, very uh, uh, excited oxygen. So we think ozone uh, is uh, damaging uh, to uh, the living tissue. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's one way. Uh, uh, pollution. So we know that that people who live in uh, very air polluted areas have, have all sorts of things, increased risk of a variety of things, but including morbidity and mortality. Uh, so that's the other thing. Um, uh, obviously, radon. This is naturally occurring uh, radiation from the from the dirt from the ground. Uh, so, if you have a basement, it's been typically in the United States, it's been checked for radon, yeah. and it's because if you spend time in the basement, you get irradiated over a long period of time, increases the risk for cancers. Having X-rays. Uh, so, this is part of the problem with excessive CAT scans and excessive excessive X-rays over your lifetime. Uh, it, it is also like ultraviolet light is a high energy wavelength that uh, that ca- can cause damage directly to the uh, to DNA and may also have epigenetic issues um, uh, flying airplanes so flying airplanes you're above part of our atmosphere that protects us uh, 30,000 feet uh, there's not much as not, not nearly as much atmosphere out there to protect you even though you're inside a, 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 a you know silver cylinder you still have uh, cosmic rays yeah. uh, x-rays and cosmic rays from just from uh, uh, space that hit our atmosphere and usually is are, are absorbed by if you're sitting if you're on the ground but if you're up high you tend you, you you're getting equivalent of an x-ray or so uh, every time uh, equivalent of exposure to an x-ray every time you fly internationally okay. for instance yeah so yeah that's so fascinating those are, yeah yeah those so, are just a couple of things so that's a lot of you know the you know f- physical physical contaminants and environmental factors mm-hmm. what about stress mm. and you know uh mm-hmm. childhood mm-hmm. family trauma those things have an influence on an epigenetic level don't they yeah you're very it was very excellent you must be reading like i do um <laughs> so we, we we now know that uh, that certainly a, if a baby in the mom's womb and the mother's womb and the uterus uh if the mom is smoking if she's drinking if she's under stress even before the baby ever hears a sound outside the womb or has to face the family or anything else any toxins etc the baby's epigenetics are already being altered mm. by smoking and drinking and stress of the, of the mom and certainly once you arrive on this planet and you're independent of your mother uh, you have the you were exposed to the same stuff that your mom potentially uh, was exposed to with the stress was financial or uh, or, 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 or or emotional stress etc um, uh, and then uh, and so the baby uh, not only has now some the, the half the mom's genes but also has some of uh, the epigenetic changes but also now the baby is independent of the mom outside the mom's womb and also is exposed to the, the some of these same stressors directly now um, the smoke and the stress and the household etc mm-hmm. so that also has epigenetic modifications and there's something actually in the last few years has come out uh, this is an article out of um, biological psychiatry that was uh, that was posted online in 2015 but was published in September 2016 um, about kind of the first study in humans to show epigenetic modifications from generations past that affect them. So this yeah. is uh, this is a uh, this is probably the first. Uh, it's a very small study, but the first uh, study. This in this case it was Holocaust exposure induced intergenerational effects on a gene that's methylated. So uh, so this uh, in this case there was um, 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 uh, survivors of the Holocaust. Um, and they eventually had children. Uh, they had children themselves, and how these children's g- uh, gen- genes were methylated. Um, um, and um, even though the, the the children of the Holocaust survivors themselves were not uh, uh, Holocaust survivors, 
and and even though they lived in the same household, and uh -huh. sometimes they certainly may absorb some of the uh, the stories, et cetera, that themselves are traumatizing, but they controlled for several fa factors that showed that the g genetics were modified, the epigenetics, therefore, mm -hmm. were modified in the Holocaust survivors and in their offspring also. So it's a heritable uh, 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 change. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it's a pretty profound uh, 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 study. And from there, we've we've had a lot more things happening since uh, 2015. So, and, and they would conduct that study by... Uh, essentially mapping the genome of each mm -hmm. generation, right? And yeah. then comparing the the mutations. That's right. So okay. so they're well, so these are not these are not mutations, not mutations but, but right. the, the gene expression. Right. Okay. Mutations would be of the of the actual genome right. or the DNA, but this is epigenetics, what's turned on and turned off, on. Me methylation, okay. acetylation. So yeah, so this was, you know, this kind of was uh, a, a nice a small study, but kind of gives us a hint that what we see in animals is can happen in terms of stress and this mm -hmm. uh, trauma in this case emotional trauma right. uh that uh, physical trauma also in the, the people who survived the holocaust but their children were not uh, physically or emotionally traumatized not directly they were not part of the holocaust but there were children of holocaust survivors and they themselves had uh, epigenetic changes, changes. Mm -hmm. so um are there so we differentiated at the beginning that um you know your genes are your genes you can't do anything about them but you can right. do you, you can influence what genes are turned on and off based on mm -hmm. these environmental factors, yes, right? Yes, that's, that's our so, belief. That's right. Um, you know, uh, aside from, you know, having adopting all these healthy lifestyle factors, mm -hmm. exercising, eating well, maintaining a healthy weight, avoiding excess alcohol, all mm -hmm. wearing sunscreen, mm -hmm. all the good stuff right. that we know to do. Right. Can having, um, you know, a positive and nurturing Yes. psychological and social life yes. also influence those um, That's epigenetic right. changes as yeah. well. Uh, anything that that we would this is just your grandmother would tell you this yeah right uh, you're, uh, so it's uh, kind so, of folk wisdom right? that now it we is. have an explanation we have, for we have it, right? okay. behind it yeah so uh having uh some sort of uh some sort of spiritual practice mm. is important it doesn't matter what religion etc having and part of that spiritual practice oftentimes it's a community community people in the christian faith call a community of faith sure. so this community is part of your social structure part of your support uh, having you know uh, having uh, emotional support during tough times. This is all including people with PTSD. Shortly, if they had it before, which it protects them, but certainly after P, uh, uh, tr big traumas, uh, has been shown to be helpful uh, in terms of disease re uh, reduction. Um, um, and also um, just plain old um, uh, sense of purpose. Mm. Um, um, also is important, including uh, meditation, etc. So a lot of these things that we. A lot of us do already. Uh, we have some good science behind it now. Right. Yeah, I think there's, I think kind of a like a layman's proof for this sort of is that you tend to see better health outcomes in you know in children, for example, that are raised in nurturing homes, mm -hmm. and a lot, and some of that has to do with the parents are making better choices, right. which are taking care of the children better. Right. But also, there's an epigenetic component to this where. Uh, possibly some more of these protective genes are being are staying turned on for some of these kids to help them avoid the, some illnesses. That's it's a, a hypothesis, right? This is the difficulties when we're dealing with humans. We can't control for everything, right? Because if you grow up in a household where everybody loves you uh, and cares about you and you're concerned about <laughs> you, you still you, get you, cancer. You, yeah, you can, <laughs> yeah. So, so the answer is. Uh, we 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 know that it's helpful. Is it because is it because it doesn't have just epigenetic stuff? But other people who love you will yeah. tell you tell you, hey, you haven't had your mammogram, right. or it's time for your colonoscopy. The answer is yes. Yeah. So we know that uh, just plain old being around caring kind right. uh, community community of people doesn't always have to be biologically related people obviously right. uh, your friends are a big deal right here yeah. uh, so yes so all these things we have now better science to talk about these things it's, it's, it's terrible to say let me call my old friends because I haven't talked to them for five years because there's better science for me to call them right exactly um, but, but it turns <laughs> out uh, so but you still should call them anyway yeah. if they're if they're supportive uh, people yes so I think um, to kind of wrap this up, what I the this thought has sort of occurred to me throughout our discussion that, um, you know, when we talk about children go, growing up or the things that influence our personality or mm -hmm. the um, the psychological things that we tend to have going on as mm -hmm. uh, as adults, 
we kind of bring it back to this principle of principle of nature versus nurture yes. as if they are two separate and right. dependent var- or independent, independent. variables right. right yes and really there's a lot of of overlap Absolutely. here right yes. so the the nurturing upbringing can have an mm-hmm. influence on the nature side of things at an epigenetic level and right. then epigenetics can have an influence on the nurture side of things, making us, you know, more predisposed to have personality right. traits or anything like that. Yes. So uh, I think that's really um, a, a fascinating thing to think about. Absolutely. Um, and uh, by the same token, uh, uh, trauma, uh, intergenerational, transgenerational trauma, mm-hmm. uh, people say, why can't you pick yourself up by right. bootstraps, all sorts right. of things, blaming the victim. <laughs> We may now we may now have a scientific explanation why some people quote unquote can't pick themselves up by the bootstraps. Uh, they can't just snap out of it yeah. uh, whenever it comes to uh, trauma, not just depression, et cetera, but PTSD, traumatic experiences to your grandparents or great grandparents that predispose you to having a harder time in, with respect to PTSD, anxiety, mm. depression, substance abuse, et cetera. Mm. So that needs to be explored further. Sure. Uh, my my purpose is not to, you know, to say oh, you can do whatever you want because your your epigenetics told you to do uh, do it like this. <laughs> right, exactly. But the end result is there may be a reason why uh, some people uh, are 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 able to 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 to, to uh, uh, quote unquote move a, move on, move ahead. Sure. Uh, uh, always see the positive side. Uh, there may be some other things, um, including how you were raised, no doubt about yeah. it, but also your epigenetics. It may make a difference. In, how great, you, how good you are emotionally, uh, f- physically, uh, 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 financially, even. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's exciting times to, to we can do a whole genome sequencing. Oh my gosh, yeah, uh, there's so many know, other things we could talk about. We definitely want to have a genetic yeah. expert on to Absolutely. clarify more of this stuff for us. Yeah. This is kind of you know surface level, but I think one of, one of the key takeaways and what we always want people to do is like you know have have hope, sense of hope, a sense of hope, and. Yep. And some action items. And I think one one great takeaway from this uh, topic is that the uh, healthy behaviors and lifestyle factors and environment that you surround yourself mm-hmm. with now not only affects your own health co- outcomes yes. for the diseases that you have now, but epigenetic changes can be inherited and passed down. That's so. Right. The healthy things that you do now, and not just the physically healthy things that you do now, right. but the therapy that you engage in, the communities that you mm-hmm. engage in, the relationships that you build, yes. those things can help your descendants down the line to be set up yes. um, for better success yep. too. Yes, not just you're not just passing out down your blue eyes, your yeah. your, or your curly hair. You're also passing down some of your traumas, et cetera. So it just doesn't stay with you. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, some that, of your traumas, yeah. but also some of your learnings and your that's resilience right. and your triumphs. I think that's beautiful. Yes, and so it's it's fun. It's fun to picture these things. Uh, yeah. I think it's exciting times for young people who want to get into science or mm-hmm. psychology, psychiatry, uh, all sorts of biology. It's very exciting uh, times. Yes, I think also. Uh, just medically speaking, we have a lot to look forward to in, mm-hmm. in terms of hopeful therapies that are going to emerge out of yes. um, the study where learning how to mm-hmm. uh, turn on and off some of those genes. That's right. All right. Well, thanks, Dr. Tadros. This is a really back, great Vanessa. topic. Thank you. Thanks for, I, just, I just want to say my dad passed his genes down to me, but they didn't fit. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I bought my own. Welcome back. Vanessa. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thanks. All right, guys, you know where to get a hold of us. Um, notyourduckpod at gmail.com is the email address. You can check us out on Spotify, YouTube, on our website at notyourduck.com. You can see Dr. Tadros's blog as well as listen to any and all of our episodes. It is so good to be back, guys. It's fun to have you back. See you next time. Thank you. This previous podcast represents my opinions and the opinions of my guests. This is not medical advice, and I'm not establishing a physician-patient relationship with any listener. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for informational purposes only, and because each patient is so unique, please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions that you may have.